This lesson is all about different types of anatomical terms that we use depending on the species of animal. And we're also going to look at different factors we use to evaluate animals when we're looking at them, like say standing in a herd or something like that. But we especially use these skills when we go to the livestock judging contest. This is what we're looking for in different animals. So we use visual observation to do a couple different things. We can select breeding animals, um, cattle or swine, based on conformation. Conformation is just a fancy word for how their body's put together. Their breed character, their structural soundness of their feet and their legs, which we're gonna look at in detail here in a little bit, and also body capacity. And then we select market animals based on muscling, frame size, body capacity, finish, and also structural soundness. So anatomy, anatomy is the science of body structure or the parts of an animal. So anatomy is the, is the, the different parts that we look at when we're talking about an animal. Those are the specific anatomical terms that we're going to use when we, when we refer to parts of the animal. Um, external anatomy terms are very important to be used when we're classifying animals and when we're talking about them. Conformation is the physical arrangement of bone and body tissue. So this is just a fancy way of saying how their body is put together. So how their anat anatomical parts work. Um, this would include things like skeletal structure, muscling, fat balance, straightness of the animal's lines, and also structural soundness. So how do we actually evaluate animals? One of the evaluation factors that we use is what's called breed character. And breed character basically just says how much do they look like the breed of animal they're supposed to be. Does an Angus look like an Angus? Does a Hampshire pig look like a Hampshire pig? So this is visible in the head and the general appearance of the animal. Muscling. Muscling refers to the distribution of muscle throughout the animal. You really want to look for um, fullness through the back, loin, and the rump. This would indicate a well-muscled animal. Finish is a fancy word for the amount of fat covering on the animal. You want a little bit of fat. Fat is what gives the meat its juiciness and its tenderness, but you don't want too much. Structural soundness. This is the arrangement of bone and muscle tissue, specifically in the legs. You want the legs of animals to be long and straight, and you also want to have them to want them to have adequate bone and foot to carry the animal throughout its lifespan. Especially when we're looking at beef cattle, a lot of times beef cattle are just turned out in a herd. So your bull is going to be wandering around through a herd of heifers or cows and breeding them on his own. So he needs to be able to carry himself throughout that pasture and breed all of those mares or all those females. So this is what I'm talking about when we talk at or we talk about structural soundness. So the ideal is about a 90 degree angle in the shoulder. If you have a shoulder angle that is too wide, it's actually going to cause the leg to be too straight. And that's going to put a lot of undue pressure on the knee and the fetlock. And then if you have too much angle or an angle that's too small, you're gonna end up putting more pressure as well on the elbow and the knee. That's really where you're gonna see your problems. So if we look at behind, end of the animal. Um, if you're looking at them directly from behind, you want to be able to draw a straight line from the point of the hip all the way down through the middle of the foot. So if we look at this correct one right here, so your point of your hip is about right here. You want to be able to draw a straight line all the way down and it will hit the center of the leg all the way down. All right, so if they are bowed out, they're going to be turned in. Okay, so they're going to be towed in, but their hops are going to be turned out and you're gonna end up having pressure on your hocks and your fetlocks in the back. Um, if they are cow hocked, where they're towed out and their hocks come together in the back, you're gonna end up putting too much pressure on their stifle and their hock. If you look at the side view of the hind end of the animal, you want your hind end to mirror the shoulder angle. So you want your hip angle to mirror the shoulder angle of your animal. You really want that to be an equal angle, okay? And if you get that, it's about a 90 degree angle again, um, and that will get you a nice straight leg all the way down. If they are too straight, or what we call post-legged, you're going to get pressure on the hock and the fetlock. If they are sickle hocked, you're going to end up with pressure on the hock and the stifle. 
So if we look at the front view, looking at them face on, all right, this demonstrates where you want to draw your line. You want to draw your line from the point of the shoulder all the way down from, to the foot, and it should hit the middle of the leg the whole way down. If they're knock kneed, you're going to end up, they're going to be towed out, and you're going to put more stress on the knee and the fetlock. If they are bow legged, you're going to end up with more pressure on the elbow and the knee. You also want to look at the very bottom of their foot between the fetlock and the hoof. That angle, so if we look at angles right here, this angle right here should be the same angle. You want your, this part of the foot right here is called the pastern, and then this is the hoof. You want the angle of the pastern to mimic the angle of the hoof. Here, your pastern angle is too deep, which makes your hoof angle a little bit too steep. And this is just the opposite. This is where it's too straight. You're, that's gonna, just going to end up putting even more pressure on the joints of the animal that you don't want to do. So body capacity. Body capacity is also known as depth of rib. And typically we're going to look at the side view of the animal to determine body capacity. So if we're looking at these two animals, the one on the left is a mature cow. The one on the right is a immature steer. And what we're looking at here, when I say depth of rib, the ribs on an animal are typically right around here, very similar to where your ribs would be. And when we think about depth, we're thinking about how deep does that rib go, okay? So we're going to measure that from the top of the animal down to their belly, okay? So depth of rib is going to be really right here, okay? So this animal clearly has more depth of rib than this animal, okay? There's just not as much capacity there. It's not as much volume there. So frame size. Frame size is the length and the size of the animal. How big is its skeleton? And this is used to compare different animals that are of similar age and that it helps indicate growth and breeding potential of the different animals. You want their frame to be proportional to their muscle development. If they have a huge frame and very little muscle, that's not really Good, you've got a big skeleton, but not much meat on it. So this is kind of how we can evaluate frame size. Okay, so one would be your smallest frame versus seven would be your largest frame. And you can have everything in between. So other things that we want to look at when we're evaluating animals. Um, livestock animals are compared to other animals of similar breed, age, and sex. So what you're going to be looking at is you might be looking at a group of Angus heifers, okay? So these are all going to be animals that are less than two years old. They're all Angus. They're all heifers. So that means that they are immature females. They have not yet had a baby. You're going to look at a group of them because if you're looking at one heifer versus a cow or a bull, it's like comparing apples to oranges. You're not going to get an accurate evaluation of that animal's growth and breeding potential. Producers are going to use these traits to select animals that carry desirable traits, and then they're going to cull animals or remove animals from their herd that display poor traits and qualities. Animals that display undesirable characteristics really should not be used for breeding purposes. Um, we can use them as meat animals. Typically, they're going to, to take a lower grade than an animal that displays very desirable characteristics. Um, but really you don't want to continue to breed those undesirable characteristics throughout your herd. Um, producers can also use a couple different data tools like average daily gain and expected progeny differences to analyze breeding animals. We're not going to look at that. Um, we'll look at that more if we, if you go on to animal two, the large animal version, um, but we're not going to look at those data tools in this particular class. All right, that's it for evaluation factors. We're going to look at cattle anatomy in the next video.